A ver tú, Pati, a ver tú. What do you want me to say? Ahí está, perfecto. Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a, an exclusive, a Patreon exclusive episode. Uh, we're trying to figure out the Patreon program. We want to spoil you guys. We're trying to connect better with our core audience, our core followers. So if you want more information, well, you know what? You're already here. Uh, for those that might be listening uh, and you're not a patron and you're curious, go check us out, man. Patreon.com forward slash Chingo Blink. Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. Gracias. And today we have my blood, my familia, mis hermanas, mis carnalas. <laughs> I have my sister, Patricia Gonzalez. Hello, mucho gusto. De Herrera. Nice to meet y'all. <laughs> we have Dalila Aguilar. Hello. Make sure y'all get close to the mic. This is their uh, first time on the... Uh, We're clueless here. And, <laughs> and, and, and uh, branding experts, we have the boss wears lipstick. Uh, <laughs> Uh, coffee cup. So before we tell old stories, before we rewind to when Pat was my security at car shows, before we talk about that first trip to California when I was a new, new, new artist, I was just a dumb little kid, uh, fresh out of co well, fresh out of college, uh, and my sister Dalila and my brother-in-law Ruben rented a van. They were like our chaperones on this field trip. So I definitely want to get into that story because uh, you know Lucky Luciano was there. DJ Eddie DeVille uh, was David, there as well. David uh, well, Joe. on that trip, David and Joe? Yeah, David oh, Joe. Oh, shit, yeah, they David all, and Joe. Was, so it was right. David, Joe, me, Eddie, uh -huh. Lucky, you and Ruben. That's right. And um, I want to get into detail about that because at the time, how old was I? Was I and how old were you and Ruben? Hmm, that was in... Uh, Make sure you get closer to Mike. That was 2003, oh, three. right? You graduated from college in 2001. Oh, one. And then so I was about 23. You know, I think you were a little, a little younger because at that time I was 33. 30, yeah, 33. Hmm, that's weird. Yeah. If you were 33, that means I was 20. That means I hadn't graduated college yet. Oh, no. Well, so you might have been 35. Okay. Maybe. So I want to. I'm wanna, in my 50s now. I want to. Uh, she's 13 years older than me. I'm 40. So do the math. <laughs> Mathematics. I'm right behind you, sister. Uh -huh. So before we. I just want to. Um, lay out some of these stories because I want you to just stay tuned. It's going to get good. We're going to talk about some of my crazy Halloween costumes that I had growing up. We have some stories about that. Some bad haircuts when Fatih Stop. was in uh, cosmetology <laughs> school. Um, how my niece Brianna, who, how old are you now, Brianna? 20, about to be 21. My, my niece is 20, but I remember when she was like a toddler, Mm -hmm. uh, checking out the CDs when we were all manufacturing CDs Probably by hand. Penny's age. Mm, she might have been a little bit older. older. Cause a she was, older? Cause she would say reject. <laughs> yeah, she would reject She was probably everything. like four, maybe. Quality control. Yeah, she was like quality yeah. control. So she would go through the CDs <laughs> and she would see if an insert was bent wrong or something was backwards. Mm -hmm. uh, if my dad made a CD wrong or something and we thought it was a child that made it. <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> but I want to get into all that. Uh, but first, since we were on the subject of the boss wears lipstick, I want to talk a little bit of real estate before we go back into time. Um, so both of my sisters are pretty heavily involved in the real estate game. Uh, it's an investment. It's a type of investment that they've chosen mm -hmm. to really go all in, um, really since they were like super young. Uh, I got in the game a little bit later. No, no, you bought your first rental at Close to the money. you bought your first rental property at twenty three. With my sister's help because yes. she made sure that I wasn't going to Sharpstown Mall all the time. At She's the like, club. Yeah. <laughs> buying alcohol at the club, being dumb and stupid and young and wanting to you know, when you have insecurities, you know, and you're like you have this uh what's the word? Like uh oh man, it's like an insecurity of like, man, they don't feel like I'm a a real a real rapper. They don't think I'm really getting money. So I'm going to have to show them. You know, I'm going to have to show them. And, yeah. and, oh, y'all got jewelry? We can get jewelry, too. Y'all got them kind of shades? We can get them kind of shades, too. And it's it's just, you're impressing the wrong people. Mm -hmm. But, um, so are you documenting, like, the flips and stuff mm -hmm. that you're doing? Well, you? I started, actually, I did three in a year and a half. Three, three flips? No, I didn't flip them. Uh, actually, I flipped, I flipped one, and the other two, I, um, I, I, I have in my portfolio. Ah, cabrón. Portfolio. So, <laughs> Mira, watch out. Uh, portfolio. Yes, he said, he said. Well, uh, because I am closer, uh, you know, to retirement, it's like you have to start thinking 
I'm 10 years away. Uh, my husband's 10 years away. He's the same age I am. So um, we are not depending on Social Security. We're not depending on the any government. type of government help. So, um, I just have to make sure that I have... And you have no several... guns, sister. I'm going to figure out your, uh, your <laughs> you mean You mean um, arrugas? I was saying guns, because, okay. man, <laughs> I, I got more guns than both of y'all. No, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. So and just, I have no hair, too. So. <laughs> yeah, just making sure that we have sources of income coming in mm -hmm. for retirement. Uh, maybe, you know, we've always lived, you know, below our means and just make sure that, you know, there's you know, money for emergencies, but when you do come, you know, to the age of retirement, if you're not ready for it, it's, it gets scary. Especially when you got a whole bunch of kids in college. Yeah. <clears throat> Congratulations, Brianna. Yesterday she was inducted into the Hall of Fame of the uh, U of H Cougars. Wolf Center Entrepreneurship. No, pues más largo que la chingada del título. Yeah, at the Bauer College of Bauer, Co man. Mm -hmm. That is so cool that um, yes. they, they're known for entrepreneurship because I didn't really know what that word was when I was going to cut, when I was like mm -hmm. first signing up. So I'm, I was, I guess, technically the first to go to, uh, I mean, y'all went to, mm -hmm. you know, different types of. Well, I did one year at community college mm -hmm. and, uh, it, you know, it wasn't for me. Yeah. So uh, it's number I, one in the nation. Mm -hmm. so. What, Bauer? Bauer just. In entrepreneurship? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, I mean, I knew from a young age that, you know, I needed to make, I wasn't going to, you know, live to work on my life. I was going to work, you know, and then work on make it. sure that, Just move it towards you, know, you for fear. I'm able to live. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, uh, yeah, kids in college. And then uh, Andrew, Pat, your son, is uh, kicking butt. Mm -hmm. um, making noise in the what Tejas would you call it? Mexique, uh, Tejas Mexique. Craft barbecue. Craft barbecue He's is doing what they call pop it. Pop ups and uh, catering. So like. what's what's the difference between craft barbecue and like regular barbecue? Craft barbecue, um, I think it's the rub and you stay up all night just taking care of it, <laughs> spraying it. He's mm -hmm. just versus how like what like a pop ups is more mm -hmm. or what. Commercial, I think so. probably mm -hmm. like presentation and then just different Correct. ways of serving it. Mm. You know, serving the the brisket, the barbecue. Kind of like craft it's beer. Finds creative ways mm -hmm. and different. And those um, those cheeseburgers look good. Oh yeah, oh yes, yeah. very yeah. good. I heard <clears throat> Pat, my sister Pat, um, she knows her son Andrew when he does his barbecue pop ups. I mean, they're making corn from scratch, like like. Mm -hmm. Breaking it down, mm -hmm. I don't know all the steps. Rotate. Staying up, uh, my nephew Andrew stays up all night um, mm -hmm. uh, smoking he does briskets. It all. We, he cuts, yeah. he chops. Yeah. He, he does doesn't all. let her help. But y'all, but you assist. Oh, huh? I yeah. assist. You're um, hauling stuff. Oh you're yes, there. helping them load up, uh, set up, buying, flipping tortillas. Oh, mm -hmm. serving. Yeah, and um, what what has the feedback been on all his stuff? Very good. Um, he has a following. Mm -hmm. People continue to come whenever they know the location mm -hmm. that he will be at. Yeah, That's I was at the show. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, I mean, I get flashbacks because, mm -hmm. you know, those, um, it, I mean, obviously it's um, <clears throat> it's night and day, it's two different industries, but, you know, seeing, seeing my sisters, mm -hmm. yeah, helping, you know, their kids that are, you know, young, and I, mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, you know, they're still at it, they're still helping mm -hmm. these little mocosos, and I was the yeah. first mocoso. Um, yeah, and I see, uh, follow follow my nephew Andrew, his barbecue page is at Texas Mexi Q. Because his style of barbecue is he's bringing something that I'm seeing that it's getting bigger, it's growing, which is um, like Mexican style, how do you describe that? Like Tex-Mex, Tex -Mex. backyard style. Yes, and there's a, a, a lot of barbecue pit masters in Houston that Mm -hmm. they kind of it's like twist. a big family they support each other mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah almost like when you were you know rapping just you know uh, colleagues those people in that yeah i mean even like even like nymphas nymphas supposedly she was the first one her and her husband they were the first ones to take fajitas and like put mm -hmm. it on the menu exactly. and present it a certain way and supposedly fajitas before then 
were like just you didn't want that it's meat mm -hmm. it's like throw away give away sell it for cheap it's chewy it's tough nobody wants mm -hmm. that but where she was from Rio Grande Valley that's something people bought and found a way to make it you mm -hmm. know a part of lifestyle mm -hmm. and culture and tasty and uh, I mean obviously he doesn't do fajitas but but to me I see like it's it's almost like an evolution of that because it had that mix you know, mm -hmm. the text. Yeah, the pico and the queso fresco and... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to... Uh, I, I keep an eye and I'm just watching. And, and and one thing I'm curious about, I want to ask him, is like, what what are you tweaking with each brisket? Because I'm assuming each brisket you smoke, it's almost like stage time. Mm -hmm. So it's like, ah, I need to not open the set like that or I need mm -hmm. to not, you know... Right. Go this road. That joke didn't work, or I oversmoked it, or whatever. Yeah, he right. just loves it and has a passion. And every slice, it's oh, beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad he. I'm glad he is. Um, what's the word? Like he didn't wait 10, 15, 20 yeah, years down the road, yeah. mm -hmm. jumping around corporate jobs, and mm -hmm. just smoking briskets on the weekend, selling them on the side, yeah. mm -hmm. and just thinking like wanting that feedback, like mm -hmm. you know. Uh, well, you have a really good job, so maybe it's not a good idea. All right, well, maybe yeah. not this year, but I'm mm -hmm. glad he dove in. Mm -hmm. you know. yeah. And I think that Pat, I think Pat is also using a lot of what she learned helping mm -hmm. oh, yes. you. Mm -hmm. And it's the same mm -hmm. way because when she's there and he's setting up, it's like, why don't we, you know, put this here? And that's, you know, what that's she learned from merchandising. The drill team, that's what I did. I set up. For, mm -hmm. for all of their events. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then my son, a lot of other moms, but my son's taken a different approach, even they have the same degree. Um, Andrew, and they're both in the restaurant uh, business or industry. But Eric, my son is, uh, Andrew I think is more like, um, uh, you know, with the food and the kitchen and the art of yeah. the cooking. The cooking but then my son, he's not, you know, well, Eric, mm -hmm. you know, in the kitchen, he knows how to run the kitchen. Well, he manages the an entire restaurant. He opened Greenbos. up a uh, green. Well, he manages Greenbos, but it was an opening a brand new um, uh, establishment okay. over at uh, where is it? New Caney? Mm -hmm. In New Caney. So he was one of the opening managers, and he's young too. He's uh, he was what twenty five when he opened just out of college, but um, his idea is, you know in the business but franchising or opening up you know his own restaurant but m more of the managing yeah, yeah, yeah. The, he's on the management the business side. yeah so um he, 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 he's coming i tell him i said look son i said i'm ready i said i'm ready you let me know mm -hmm. and then he says not yet mom not yet just give me you know another you know five years or maybe even 10 mom i said okay i said i got you so he knows yeah, that he has start getting his team in order and yeah, getting that, that blueprint and the uh, business plan. Yeah, so he has he knows he has my support and he knows he has the family support. So Yeah, we'll go eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you know I'm gonna have Brianna help with the business plan. Yeah. So uh Yo lavo plato, mm -hmm. but no problem. Yeah, so you know, just making sure sure, you know, that they they're they're you know ready. Pat and I I guess you know that we're older than you are. And, um, yeah, I was the oops baby, so <laughs> I came so, along with it. Yeah, that. so we wanted to make sure, of course, you know, that, you know, you saw, you know, things that we never saw. And then mm, we have, you know, good parents, of course, you know, our parents are great, but they really didn't push us, you know, that much into, you know, school or, you know, college Activities. or anything like that. <laughs> I'm not okay with, you know, not having all that, but... Um, but yeah, so just you know, seeing them uh, well, come yeah, to the country and yeah, yeah so I was like, well, you know, we're gonna do a little bit better than they did, but I'm gonna make sure that mm -hmm. you know, of course, my brother being a lot younger, that he's gonna you know be said, and then my kids and her kids. So uh, yeah, I always um, like I'll even tell my son like, hey, our parents, hers included, came from Mexico, immigrants, so we started from zero, like we didn't start with. Uh, uh, trust fund no. we, we didn't inherit like oh there's this family business that you're gonna take over you know mm -hmm. it was just kind yeah. of like hey man i got your citizenship no. you're mm -hmm. born here that's right you know yeah. you're good you, you got somewhat of a head start mm -hmm. you know? so with my granddaughters you know i'm making sure that you know they their homework and their education and i have them 
in a trilingual school, you know, Spanish, English, and Mandarin. The older one, Nia. For those who don't know, Mandarin is Chinese. Yeah, Nia, she's uh, going on four years, so she's pretty good. She's almost, you know, not fluent, but she's able to hold, you know, a conversation wow. and, 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 you know. And then the little one, she just started, so we took the other two. I wonder if she could watch, um, like, TV that's in Spanish. I mean, I'm sorry, like in Mandarin, mm -hmm. and if she, like, picks up most of it. Well, I think so, because I'm starting to do that. You're picking it up? Well, I, I, <laughs> well, no, 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 no. Her teacher, um, her Mandarin teacher offers um, a weekly meeting for mm -hmm. adults. I mean, not weekly, I'm sorry, monthly. So I attend those, and she, you know, shows us the the way they do their tones, their highs, their lows, and she <laughs> she. Yeah. So uh, you know, so I start listening, and there's certain words that I, I I've seen them before because I help the girls see, with yeah. their flashcards. The symbols? No, not the oh. symbols, the sounds, the words. No, oh. so. <laughs> cabrón, ahorita en Corona. Está cabrón, ahorita en China. Uh, the folks that we. Uh, that we know they used to live in China mm -hmm. uh, they live in Miami now and uh, I want to ask them because um, I have a show in Naples coming up this weekend so we're gonna stop by say hello to them and I want to ask them like uh, are y'all glad y'all got out like in the nick of time mm -hmm. and uh, there's did I tell y'all that um when we went to Shanghai we attended a comedy show in English uh, and the host and the organizer is a Mexican American yeah. comedian yeah. from uh, California. His name is Barney, mm -hmm. and uh, he hit me up recently. He's like, "Hey man, I'm back in the states." Blah 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 blah. He even had his own comedy club in uh, in China, mm -hmm. and he said that it got to the point to where people weren't wanting to attend like public gathering type of events, mm -hmm. and um, that a lot of businesses took a hit mm -hmm. because of the coronavirus. Yes. So then. He decided just right when that was happening, just to. Well, he got out start. right before it was one of those like, "Hey, y'all can't leave!" Like oh, all the. So then they knew about it before we did. Well, it happened. It started over there. So, yeah, yeah, I know yeah. that, but. Yeah, they knew first. Oh, okay. Like plus, in China they have their own. Uh, what's the word? It's their own little bubble too, because they have their little WeChat. Everybody's on WeChat. Uh, obviously, it's kind of like uh, it's some form of communism. So. The way information gets out, mm -hmm. they regulate what websites, oh, okay. they regulate, you know, what's said. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> but um but like I was saying, you know, seeing my nephews and nieces uh get into business and just get into projects and hobbies and interests and whatever it is and mm -hmm. you know, whether it ends up being a long term thing or not. Like even Brianna, uh let them know about the uh, clothing. Um, well, Brianna you know, loves fashion, mm -hmm. and of course, you know, with uh, her attending uh, the Bauer Business School, um, I just approached her and mm -hmm. I said, hey, Bri, I said, um, you know, if you're ready, you know, let me know. I got you. <laughs> the name? The name of it? Stargazer. 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 Uh -huh. So she designs, and then of course, you know, with me helping mm -hmm. you all those years, I still have my little connections, mm -hmm. you know, with designers and uh, the, distribution, the distribution, uh, t-shirts, wholesale, wholesale and, manufacturing, uh, manufacturing. So um, you websites. know, websites. Website. <laughs> I was able to set everything up for her, and of course, you know, making sure that our taxes are straight, yeah. and you know, with the government, making sure her LLC is straight. So uh, I set the business part of that mm -hmm. for her, mm -hmm. almost like I did mm -hmm. with you, and then of course she's like the creative. Mm -hmm. mind behind it so anything she wants to do when it comes to color styles uh designs uh of course that's her my target market is totally different so she knows what you know her target mark market likes so um so you know that's what i have that with her and um to me it's like of course you know i do my real estate and all but making sure that if my family needs you know the help Brie, can you turn that help. light off right there this one right here because it's making a buzzing noise i want to make sure we're lit it's a bottom it's a, a up under it like on the back panel uh-huh mm. oh. 
Este, so, what, what was y'all's first reaction when I was like, well, first I was in college radio, uh-huh. and um, Dalila, you, uh, you were there for some of the shows, uh-huh. because I think at that point I had already graduated, <laughs> but I still had my little show, uh-huh. and I was about to hand it over, hand it off, and uh, just, you know, move on, but um, what were y'all thinking when it was like, okay, this kid is serious about this damn yeah. chingle boom okay. persona? <laughs> what, what is this? Um, when did you come to us with that? Was it like your senior year in college? Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm because probably because it, w- it was it was weird because you uh, your major was pre law. You were declared. Pre law. Yeah, once you declared, and then your second year, you decided you wanted to do. I don't business. know if they called it pre law, but. I would always ask people, like, uh, I guess I'll be a lawyer. What am I supposed to major in? They're like, eh, a lot of lawyers major in political science, but you can major in anything. And I'm like, oh, okay. I was like, well, why would I major in anything? That didn't make any sense to me. Like, you're telling me I can major in English and be a lawyer. They're like, yeah, you just take the bar exam, you go to law school or whatever, whatever. And I'm mm-hmm. like, that doesn't make no sense to me. And I kind of really didn't want, I was trying to convince myself, like, well, maybe you're good at arguing. Like, I don't mm-hmm. know. <laughs> yeah. But... Well, to us, it was like we, to us, it was like either doctor, attorney, or something, not even business. Not even, yeah, yeah, I remember engineer. too, it was like business. Yeah, we're like, even business. a lot of y'all's what friends, a lot of y'all's friends, like yeah. we, I'd be DJing one of y'all's pool parties or something, and they'd be like, hey, uh, hey, little Pete, you know, what are you, uh, what are you majoring in here in college? Uh, marketing, or you going to school to be a salesman? Like, you're going to yeah. get in debt to be a salesman? And I'm like, fuck, I don't know. I don't know, bro. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm signing up. I like, I guess I like business. Mm-hmm. Up under business, there's either gonna be accounting, boring, finance, boring, marketing. Oh, that sounds creative. Creative. That sounds like yeah. there could be some like art somehow in it, like mm-hmm. persuasion, some finessing. Like you gotta convince people to mm-hmm. to buy Use the product. Creativity. And they're just like, yeah, you're gonna school to be a salesman. So I was like, <laughs> Yeah. Um, so no, I mean, um, at the end we just wanted you to graduate. You know, it was like whatever, just get your degree and just do you know, something. Just do something. Just get just your want degree. A piece of paper. <laughs> and um, and then uh, you started the radio station with um, um, what yeah, was Donnie it? and Donnie. Sean. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, so we were like, okay, you know, cool. We, you know, you had listeners. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, we would get fan mail. Yeah, you had fan mail. And uh, so then you graduated with your degree in uh, business with a minor in marketing. Yeah, and what was it concentration in marketing? We made so much noise on that public radio Sunday night that the program director from uh, I don't know if it was ninety eight five the beat or one of those stations that was like popping up in San Antonio, uh-huh. they called my boss. They called the university, wow. and they were like. Hey, uh, we're the home of hip hop and R and B in this market, and who the hell is this kid mm-hmm. with his little Sunday night hip hop chop shop middleman mix show, whatever the hell it was but called? But you guys were doing a lot of underground artists. Yeah, so I was. That's why. I was. I mean, that's why I was. Yeah. They yeah. weren't playing them. So, yeah, yeah. So that's how so, they continued. Well, I sorry, I cut you off, Alila. So mm-hmm. don't forget where you were. Uh, basically. They called my boss at the radio station. He's like, hey man, uh, I just got a call from like blah, 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 FM. And apparently you're a threat. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. yes. <laughs> and that became a long line of trying to be a threat and trying to get phone calls. And like the radio station was like, and I'm thinking, I, it's David and Goliath. I have no promo budget. I have no street team. We don't have a, a poster. We don't have a tent. We don't have. A, we don't do remotes. We don't have a sales department. We don't have a crew of DJs. We don't have anything. We have like a two-hour slot Sunday night, and uh, but we were playing big independent artists mm-hmm. that they wouldn't touch. So I just from that point, I just always saw like the riches are in the niches. I saw how like the underground and like the underdog and I was just anti-authority I guess mm-hmm. anti-corporate but anyway mm-hmm. yeah and then you would bring them as your guests to the yeah we had like a little station. flip up there freestyling yeah. and that's actually where I first started like freestyle rapping and some people would be like hey man like you know some of that shit's kind of tight like you might have something mm-hmm. or and then when I started doing the chingo personality or character or persona on air I'd be like hold up y'all 
<laughs> man, my cousin Chingo, Chingo Bling, he's calling, he's late. Actually, he's here or whatever. Yeah. And then we'd like, you know, because yeah. people are listening, they can't see you. Uh -huh. So it'd be like, ah, perate. And then one of the DJs like, oh, man, they got a whole entourage up in here. And I'd be like, hey, perate, wait. Hey, quiero rapear. Yeah. Hey, hold on, Chingo. You know, and the phones would light up. Mm -hmm. Yo, Chingo, man, when is Chingo going to be on this episode? Yeah, and this was way before social media. Yeah, before there was yeah. a such thing yeah. as going viral. Before that word was even a thing, we yeah. were trying to go viral. The internet was just starting to... People barely had email. Yeah. <laughs> this is before YouTube. This is way before yeah. YouTube, my people. Yeah, exactly. So, so, but yeah, you were saying that uh, I had a marketing... Um, whatever emphasis uh -huh. business degree emphasis on marketing. yeah and then uh, you graduated from college um and then it, the summer i remember you were having to go back to do the radio station so i was like coming and going i would drive you up there because i didn't want you driving back you know at two three in the morning after the show Hijo. because tell them what hour the show was wasn't well, it from like one to two or something crazy or like uh, if I had to remember, it was we, like twelve to one. It was maybe crazy. It was, maybe it was eleven to one. Maybe it was twelve to two. I can't remember. Yeah, it was like. But I was a student, else. so I remember having to carry like he heavy mail crates full of vinyl, full of records. Some of y'all don't know what vinyl is, but we would have to like park and go through this like whole building to get to where the studio was. Mm -hmm. You couldn't just pull up right to yeah, the studio and load. Yeah. So it was like deadlifting. It was like deadlifting fifty pound crates mm -hmm. and. If you wanted to do one, and all those, all that vinyl costs money. Now you just download it for free from wherever. You rip it off of YouTube, and then the DJ can play it off his laptop. He can play it off his Spotify. He can play it off, play it off of YouTube. You had to buy the wax back mm -hmm. then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, so then you were still doing that. You were selling CDs. You were already going to the, the flea, flea market. market and and stuff. Um, and then we, when we moved you back, I remember uh, Mom and I drove up there in a the U-Haul mm -hmm. to bring all your stuff back after you. No, no, from you lived apartment. out there six months after you graduated With from that college. Apartment. Yeah. And then I must have left like some tra a bag of trash or something, and they that that apartment complex they were sending the notice fee. So like, hey, we're gonna charge you 200 bucks to clean up, whatever that was, it was a bag, to my college address. So now I've already moved on, and I think it got to the point where I was finally about to buy a house a few years later, and then yeah. that shit came up. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you owe Rosewood Apartments off Wurzbach and I-10 in San Antonio some money. And I'm like, who the hell, what, what do you mean? <laughs> wow. And yeah. then I looked into it, it was a cleaning fee. It's like, well, what's going on with this cleaning fee? Like, well, we sent you a notice. Where'd you send it to? The university mailbox? Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> but, uh, but, no, but, and then, but, and then you know, I was like, I think when I, when I started, you know, to see all that, I was like, oh man, I said, I, I need to be there. I need to watch his back, you know. I think it was more just trying to protect you, I yeah. guess, like from people, making fun of you or like if they were going to accept you i was gonna you know we were gonna be we're there gonna beat them we were up. gonna be there and uh and then you were doing the flea market you were bringing in some money but you didn't have time because you were out there looking for a job so then I oh said, yeah we yeah. you and i just signed up for a real estate uh, class. class yeah uh, and, and so i remember I, I found a spiral with all of your notes real estate notes uh, yes and uh i think on the side you were you had Digital your probably. your you had your other uh, side business. Oh, yeah. I want to see that. Uh -huh. Yeah, because that's what it always was. I, I was in a class, that. and they'd be trying to teach us something about marketing. But I'm like trying to understand it. So I'm like, okay, so when you say vertical integration, is that kind of like? And I I think I would even ask the teacher like, is that like you you're a record label, you sell CDs, but you also own the record store? They're like, uh, yeah, that's vertical integration. Oh, okay. And I'm like, so as horizontal integration is you own a record store, but now you're going to own an, another chain, another record store. And they're like, yeah, yeah, that's horizontal. I'm like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And anyway, we went to the real estate class, and um, I got a call about hosting. Uh, Kid Frost is coming to Texas to do a Texas run. They're doing like, Man, it was like Crystal City, Texas, like Uvalde. It was like mm -hmm. random South Texas yeah. stuff. I had a, I had a pickup truck mm -hmm. that um, my parents got me. It was just me and a little uh, shrink wrap mechanism 
and like some jewel cases and some burn a burner and some blank CDs. So when I was hosting at these shows, because it's like, ah, you're just a little uh, comic relief. You're the little clown mm-hmm. guy that goes up there and messes with the crowd and talks shit. Okay, cool. But I was the only one with merch. Mm-hmm. I, have, I probably had the most stage time because I would I would tell the promoter, like, hey, man, such and such artist is late. Uh, you need me to stretch and, like, kill time. I can do a song. Or I'll tell the DJ, hey, man, I'm about to do a song because I've already been up here three times talking, introducing people. And I was like, hey, cabrón, yo también hago rap. Sí, yo también rapeo. Like, what's up? You want to hear some rap? And then hit it. And then that's when I first started. Those were, like, my open mics. Well, that little promoter guy, he he was supposed to pay me whatever it was plus expenses. Well, the expense part, I had to like show up at the office with my little receipts. And this dude was just like blowing me off. And um, he was trying to, and, but on top of that, he was trying to sign me. Mm-hmm. We went to Jim's diner and he wanted me to sign some paper. And then, uh, and then somehow Baby Bash's name came up and this is before Sugar Sugar. And he was like, oh, Baby Bash, you know, oh, he's, he's done with. Yeah, that's a wrap. Yeah, he's done with. Like, like just hating on people because yeah. maybe they told him no because he was a slime ball. And then Bash put out Sugar Sugar and the rest was history. We mm-hmm. crossed over, mainstream. Um, so that guy was wrong <laughs> a couple times. <laughs> but there's a lot of little funny oh, yeah. personas. We've, I mean, we've seen, I've seen a lot, you know, we've been through a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, constructive criticism yeah, people and come and like go. bad criticism. We so. switched trap houses. Yeah, we were Love you one all trap over. house. Started in the living room of my house, and then from there we moved on to one of my rentals. Um, it came vacant. It came vacant. We moved that whole office over there. Yeah. And then oh yeah, the first one was a what was that street called? Not Woodbridge. Office. No. Oh, uh, Park Meadow. On oh, Park Meadow mm-hmm. in like your living room. Yes. I remember designing like the air chingo uh, with the. We came up with the name there. With the middle fingers in the back. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that was our best seller. Like yeah. one of our best sellers. Beginning. Yeah, at the beginning. It had the, the like, little fuck you hand. Yeah. It said like chinga su madre la migra. And I was like, no, mijo, you mijo, can't do that. You're, mijo. Mijo. Who's gonna wear that? Mijo. Chinga su madre la migra. Ay, niño, I like scanned my. I did like the yeah, F they were. Hand, <laughs> F you. They were your I did the. I shot the bird and like scanned my hands, <laughs> and then in Photoshop, just typed the words, and I was like, okay, who was our first screen printer? Was it Jay? Uh, or who were we going to? Um, Jay was the screen printer, but there was a middle. person. Yeah, we didn't know who. We didn't know Jay at the time. Yeah, right? there was a middle person. So when we started, you know, then we were like cutting out the. Middle so I think the front <laughs> had air chingo on it. Yeah, it did. Which was like the, the jump part. man. Mm-hmm. But with like a pimp cup instead of a basketball and had a cowboy hat and then he had boots. Mm-hmm. So it was me. I yeah. think I think we like took a picture of me doing like a jump man yeah. pose. It was yeah. Then I had to Photoshop it. Mm-hmm. And then then the boot that s- said welcome to the border. Yeah, mm-hmm. so then I mean we, we went and we produced all these um T shirts and I'm like, how in the world are we gonna sell them? Okay, because you weren't doing very many shows at the time, were you? I don't know. No, I think nobody wanted to book me because no. they had no idea what the hell I was. But then we were still learning about the internet, and then that's when you put up, a we website. had an actual website. My buddy Sean, who was my radio DJ uh, partner, mm-hmm. yeah. he made, he, he's like, hey, because we went to college together. Yes. And I was like, hey, man, didn't they teach you Dreamweaver? Like, don't you know how to make websites? Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'll make your website. And he, he put it together. It was pretty dope, actually. And, we had um, a store. And I think on the little, like, hey, man, so that you like, hey, let's try it. We'll put a yeah. P.O. box. Yes. So I went and I opened up a P.O. box. And we're like, send money order you, if you want the you, shirt. You would print the order form. Mm-hmm. Remember? And you would print. And mail you would, it in with the money order. Yes. Yeah. Your name, your the money order, and where are we supposed to ship it to? Like the shipping mm-hmm. address. Everything was handwritten. Form. Mm-hmm. And I still remember going to check the P.O. box. For the first time. Well, a whole week. Uh, of course, you know, after. Uh, Every it, day. It, it shit. came live. Yeah. You know, it's shit. like. Mm, I had a- like, you know, two weeks later, I get the first one, and I still remember. I don't remember. I kept it for the longest time, but I don't know what happened to it. But I still remember that the guy was from Arizona. Mm-hmm. Do you remember? Arizona. You remember the address, the name. Yeah, you know. it was in Arizona. Uh, our first little envelope, you know, so thick, all folded up with the money order in there. But uh, I was like, oh, yes. Well, yeah, because so, if you think about it, it's like there's this kid doing this random shit and he put it up online 
and some other kid in Arizona. Yeah. Is, in Arizona. Is sending money yeah. for this off the wall shit. In and Texas. It, yeah. Yeah. And that was I mean, if you think about it, we got into the music business when it was like being discombobulated. Like record stores are shutting down. Well, the mom and pops really yeah. like made us for the mm -hmm. longest. Yes. And eventually a lot of them couldn't survive. Some some did, some are still open. Mm -hmm. Very few are still open. But uh, it's like we got into an industry where it's like, ooh, you get into the music business? Mm -hmm. Like, ooh, how's that yeah. gonna work out? Yeah. CDs, ooh, what about? We used yeah. to mail out shipments, I remember, to yeah. these stores. Well, well, yeah, they were all uh, mom and pops, like Pete said, mom and pop stores, and uh, yeah, they were calling them in. But see, before we got to that point, a lot happened. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't straight no. going into mom and pops. We started off at the flea market, mm -hmm. and I was like trying, I was like almost begging these people to put them on their shelves. I wasn't talking about like end caps or anything like that, because of course that was at the major you know, stores. It was just putting it somewhere in your vitrina or whatever you mm -hmm. call those displays. And uh, so no, no, like who's this kid or whatever? Oh yeah, I've heard of him, but no. And then I was like, well, I'll be on consignment. You know, I'll come back. Uh, so I was having to babysit, you know, all of the um, the, the flea markets, the mom and pop pops. stores. I was driving around all over. I had some in San Antonio. And then I started, you know, once you got no known a little more, then we started uh, consigning just a little bit out of state. And then, but I made sure, because remember the street tees? We used to have street tees mm -hmm. and stuff. So I made sure I had like a person I could trust in each one because some wouldn't pay me. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them I would go, they would, you know, I would go in there to collect. They wanted more CDs, but they didn't want to pay me for what I the had last. previously left. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but then of course, you know, your demand was like to where I didn't have a problem. They were paying me. I went up on the price. We went up on the price mm -hmm. and they were paying me up front for the product. So, which was great, yeah. Which because was not great. a lot of people were able to do that at that time. Yeah, but in order for him to get to that point, he had to do a lot. You know, you oh, had to man. do a lot. We were shooting music videos, yeah. and back then, music videos were super expensive. We didn't. We were, totally. We we're just trying to figure it out. Let's make posters. But let, let's go back in the time. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about uh, Pete, the little kid, because I'm <laughs> sure some people were curious. Um, I know one story off the top of my head. Um, I, I almost felt like an only child a lot of times yeah. because y'all were older. Once y'all became teenagers and- I moved know, out of the house, I think when you were like seven or eight, I got married and left. I've been yeah, so married about, 32 years. So you were around 20? I was 21 when I got married. You were 13 when I grew Which back then, yeah. which back then, it's like, mm, you're 20, you're still not married. <laughs> it's almost like- So te pasó Yeah. yeah. I, was bring, bring, I was Brianna's age. Like now I- can't even imagine. Oh, I mean, there are people my age getting married, but it's like, you know, yeah. not the norm. Yeah, no, yeah. now it's kind of like, whoa. Yeah, you know, like, hey, you sure you gonna do that? Yeah, yeah. Pat was like 24, 25 when she got married, so she was already almost like an old maid at home. <laughs> what, 24, 25? Yeah, and people, are, people already like, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. 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 <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of jacked up. Yeah, and then Ruben, well, you've known Ruben on uh, since I've been with him since we were. You were like a one year old. I was a chaperone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once parents, I started talking, yeah. oh, hey, they no. couldn't take me no more. Yeah, I was gonna take you anywhere. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> he knows too much. He repeats things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know what's funny though is I I have little memories from around that time or like. And again, you know, memories are funny, so it's kind of like, uh, are you sure you didn't just see that in a picture? Like, do you really remember that? But I remember, like, um, uh, Ruben, yourself, and me, mm -hmm. or I, uh -huh. grammar, we went to college. <laughs> este, we, uh, I think we were, like, at a Fiesta, Sellers Brothers or uh -huh. something. They were, like, selling some little, like, car or something outside. Uh -huh. He, like, got me that. Uh -huh. And then one time, my Christmas was uh, scheduled to be jacked up. Yeah. Uh, the gifts were going to be a little late. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. They, and uh, Ruben, I don't know where he was he working. He was in the Marines. No, we were still dating. We were engaged. But, but he spent his whole check. I, I think he was really, like, wanting those toys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were for me. Uh -huh. But it was like a He-Man. It was a, a black spider with these, like, orange robotic. You still remember. Yeah, and it, zzz, 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 it would move, and it had, like, the claws. But I got hooked up. I was like, damn, why Ruben can't be Santa Claus the next year? Well, he's been dressing up yeah. as Santa Claus now mm -hmm. for over 30 years. But, I, uh, I remember Pat 
had a, a, a boom box like because your friends and friends. <laughs> yeah because um a lot of your friends were all into the break dancing crews and stuff and out under the street lamp uh on the street they mm -hmm. bust out the cardboard and the linoleum yeah. and i would just like watch from like the window from the house and um and uh later i eventually kicked a hole in the speaker of the boom box because uh it was Pat's boom box mm -hmm. And uh, she had the Be Beastie Boys cassette, which I like memorized yeah. because I was bored. I was the only child. <laughs> she was child. the fun sister. She took you to all the concerts. And... Yeah, we, we went to see uh, Scarface. And uh, that's when Master P was new. He was opening Little up. Little Kim, I think. Yeah, Little Kim was there. <laughs> Pop sister. That was the original uh, Super Bowl halftime right there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I remember one time, too, like I, I wanted to go to a club because I was like finally old enough. <laughs> but I was, but I grew up, I mean, I grew up, I went to, um, I went to high school in New Jersey and then I went to college in San Antonio. So I didn't know nobody really in Houston. Right. I didn't really keep in touch with my sixth grade, eighth grade, seventh grade Elementary friends. friends. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, I'm bored. He wanted, to, he wanted to go back. I was like, yeah. I'm bored. Were you still living at home? Oh, so. we married. I think I was. I know. And then Pat was like, fine, I'll take you. And I'm like, great. We're going to the club with my, my older <laughs> sister. Oh. So we got there early. I try to go with my kids. They won't let me. <laughs> so we get, I forget what club. It might, was it like Liquid or Rodeo or some shit? I don't know. But um, we got there a little early. And of course it's awkward because I think I wasn't old enough to drink yet. And uh, we're just like kind of watching people on the dance floor. And I'm like, man, I'm just here with my big sister. This is weird. And, uh, and that's when I realized like, man. I'm, what's the word, like socially awkward in these situations. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I need to be in the DJ booth or have something going on because this is not gonna work out. Like mm -hmm. me and clubs are not gonna work out if I'm having to stand here, like watching people and like, I know it's hot, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, put it in the light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What happened? <laughs> You gotta tell these stories. Um, I know. What happened? Do you edit these? What part are you trying to cut out? Like her trying to whisper something in my no. ear. <laughs> no, I'd rather not edit because that's just more work. Okay. But, but anyway, the picture I'm trying to paint is that like, um, you know, getting into hip hop was from an interesting uh, perspective because, you know, I had older siblings. So I knew about Beastie Boys and like whatever. Yeah, cool older siblings. Yeah, cool older siblings. <laughs> MTV, I, I saw break dancing, you know, I saw how Pat was into like a lot of different music, like the Smiths and the Pesh Mode and Emilio, Fashion. Emilio Navaida. Emilio Navaida <laughs> and Madonna and um, Everything. Fashion and like, uh, what was that contest? Was it Cosmetology where y'all had to like dress uh, people up and do like and a, a whole thing? Mm -hmm. So y'all did a whole fashion show. And then also a, um, when I did HR, what was it? The, it was some contest you had over there at college. Oh, but, but you were supposed to win, yeah. no? And something happened, there was yeah. controversy? Yeah, called the wrong person. The wrong name. <laughs> she dressed up as Star Bride. What was it, Rainbow Bride or something? Or something. Yeah, it wasn't really, that was pretty creative. But then on your video, she used to do hair or makeup, remember? Which, uh, which video? Um, the taco, uh, shop. taco shop, and well, we helped out. And then I was a guinea yeah. pig, so one of the first haircuts she ever gave, uh, what was the new, it was like a new little mushroom fade yeah. that was out. Yeah. That was a new cut. And Mijo, you want the mushroom fade? See, see, that ain't right, you can't have mushroom fade. See, see, the mushroom fade? Okay, mushroom fade. Yeah, Allah, madre. Okay, like okay, okay. give me a band-aid, give me some alcohol. This is a bow cut. I had a jacked up bow cut and, and a cut. And then that was uh, the, at the time that you won that science fair thing. You had to take a picture with your... Oh, I had a bow cut. And you had that, yeah, in your picture you have that bow cut. With your little trophy and it's your survived. project. <laughs> was it the acid rain uh, project? Um, it was something with a battery, I remember. Uh, it was, I don't know. Because I got in trouble for the acid rain. No, it wasn't that. We uh, did. Well, Dalila was living on the east side at the time. Mm -hmm. She was the first one in the family to have a two story house. Yeah. And I was like, dang, y'all got stairs. Yeah. <laughs> it was on the east side. And I was collecting, we were collecting rainwater, right? Or well, you used to live off I 10 in Lillian. Yeah. So my science fair project was, oh, I'm gonna, 
I don't, I don't even know how I found I must have found it in a book because how else would I know how to do this yeah. if the internet was like not a thing at that time at all. <laughs> Al Gore was still inventing, inventing it. But anyway, um, I went and got like some rain samples. But long story short, I purposely put vinegar in one of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To make it acidic. Yeah. And uh, I must have read it in the book. Like, oh, if you put vinegar in one, you'll see. Change like the pH. Balance. Yeah, so the tester that you make will show acidic. So my little dumbass put like in the report, like uh, this is regular rain from this part of Houston. I took like a picture or okay. something. It's like, no, you know, if you can see the test results and I taped it on there. Over here on the east side, uh -huh. where my sister lives, <laughs> it's polluted. I was like, they got the Budweiser uh, yeah. manufacturing plant over there. It's 610 yeah. loop. You got the ship channel. You got the port of Houston. Yeah. You got all these freeways and congestion. And they got acid rain in their rain. And then the, the judge, one of the judges was like, mind you, I had to carry all this shit on the bus. So it was stinking like vinegar. Oh. And one of the judges, one of the judges was like, this one has vinegar. And he like walked off. I was like, oh shit, I'm busted. They're going to take away my trophy. I'm not going to win. Yeah, like, oh, I'm going to get explained. Yeah, no, that was not when you I'm going to jail for falsifying a, a, a poster board. Yeah, but you were never in trouble. Nah. I mean, you know, Remember one yeah. time they tried to get me in trouble on the school bus? On the bus. That one, yeah, I went up there. Yeah. They were just using you they like to with the wrong right, right out. Yeah, they like right out the, the wrong first kid. Kid. Yeah. I like came home you. like, hey, I'm not allowed to ride the bus no more. Why? Right, what happened? Yeah. They said I, I cut one of the seatbelts. I was like, did you? No. No, there I go okay. to school. Yeah. Why would we'll I cut see a seatbelt? about that. Yeah. And then another time they were throwing they were throwing water balloons. On the bus, and then the bus driver, he what happened? No, I, I need to clean it because oh. I feel like I'm sweating. It's okay. Uh, well, I keep cussing okay. so, uh, so I remember the bus driver walking down the little aisle, and he's just like pointing at people, writing down names. And right when he's getting to me, I was like, man, I know he saw me. He's about to put my name. And my dumbass, I snitched on myself. I was like, I didn't throw any. But I had a couple. <laughs> you what? Okay, cool. What's your name? Put it on the thing. Damn. Uh -huh. okay, cool. But uh, yeah, you had to go up to the school and like got after them. Like, hey, y'all can't be, you know, we're going to call uh, Mecha and Lulak and, uh, <laughs> you know, why? Because he's brown? No. <laughs> but um, I was upset. Let's tell some more kid stories. Um, Pat, you want to tell the story of when uh, it was Halloween. You still hadn't moved out yet. Do you remember the Halloween one? So it was Halloween. Man, you were the cool sister. <laughs> well, you you had you had already you had already moved out. Right? So it was just me and Pat, and she's just like the teenage sister that's like in the restroom doing the hair, and there's like hairspray. And, and friends stuff. coming over. Mm -hmm. And um, so Halloween, I had a bad costume one year. What happened? Uh, we just started to gather whatever we could find. <laughs> Yeah, it's overalls. Uh, what are your cosmetology caps? Little caps. I was like, you'll be Jason. Oh, man. <laughs> you'll be Jason from Halloween. I just remember waking up like, oh, shit, what's today? October 31st. Oh, shit. Oh. Uh, what time is it? Like, the bus is going to be here, yeah. like, in no time. Yeah. You got and a little bit of time. That's when they would let you wear costumes to school. Oh, they don't like let that. them anymore? No, no not, not, not Jason or Masks, Burger or anything like that. You know, you know, you do a storybook. Characters, characters and Dr. Seuss. And you have Somebody. to take the book that goes yeah. You gotta do all that. Yeah. They, they will not, they I was Jason, no book. Yes. Jason. Kindergarten that does that participate. Well that's interesting. Uh, that's an interesting thing to look into. But uh, I remember Pat saying, Oh shit, it's Halloween. Because, uh, you know my parents are older, they're immigrants, I'm the oops baby, so they're just like, uh why don't you Halloween? <laughs> so Pat's like, Alright, look. Uh, I'm gonna put this cosmetology bonnet on your head, which is what y'all they used to use highlights. for highlights. The cap the so I'm wearing a plastic bonnet on my head. I'm like, okay, where are we going with this? She's like, all right, uh, we need to get some of Dad's overalls so you can wear those. And it, with trust, Pedro on it. it you trust me, had a little name tag. I'm like, this doesn't say Jason. It says Pedro, and uh, they were like dirty. They were like on the ground. Like, they weren't even clean over. I was like, man, I'm about to stink. My dad was a buddy. Yeah, buddy. Man. <laughs> uh, like so I'm like, I'm about to stink. It says Pedro, and I got a plastic bonnet on my head. Where are we going with this? 
She's like, uh, you're Jason. And I was like, well, I don't have a knife or a mask. <laughs> I might have had a knife, did I? The plastic knife? I think so. I'm not quite sure. But I didn't have a hockey mask. So she's like, well, look, remember that scene in Jason where they they thought he was like a part two? Like they thought he died, but really he was drowned in the swamp. And then the spirit of Jason, comes out with a few yeah, he like comes back. out of the swamp for revenge. And he just has like a couple little pelitos and that's you and you're Jason. That's what the bonnet's for. And I'm like, what? And I was like, all right, I don't, I don't know how this is gonna pan out, but I put it on and I walked on the bus and I got roasted. Oh, They're just no. like, what the hell are you supposed to be? First of all, plastic bonnet head ass, you know, Bioho protector head ass, built that. Jason. And I just took the little plastic bonnet off. You'll see. I'm going to be kind of chill with you. I'm going to be silly. Yeah, I'm still going to be funny. Yeah. And, and my costume is going to make sense. Oh my God. So yeah, my sisters, I mean, as y'all have heard and y'all can tell, they're, you they're know, naturally overprotected. Yeah. We are. You know, and no, uh, but not, not lately. I'm like, <laughs> not lately. I'm 40. We're a little bit hands off now, right, Miko? Yeah, we're pretty hands off now, right? <laughs> right, Miko? We let you do your own thing. You're married with kids. You're 40. <laughs> You're bald. You got little gray hairs in your beard. So, right, we screwed you up because of that? No, 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 no. I wanted to get into the story <laughs> of. Uh, it was like Magnifico's car show. It was one of these car okay. shows. At the Astro Arena. Now, mind you, Chingo Bling is supposed to be, you know, a fun, comedic type of vibe. You know, it's not gangster, never was gangster, was never, you know, wanting to be tough. Uh, of course, you know, you gotta stick up for yourself from time to time, but but we were never about nothing negative. We were no, just trying, just to, trying to, work. to go to these, um, we were just trying to say fly shit, put out creative stuff that stood out from the pack that people uh, enjoyed and got a kick out of. Cleto um, was with us. Yeah, we had, uh, mm -hmm. had Cleto the rooster, which people still ask for Cleto. Yeah. And I have to explain for them, to them, like, y'all know roosters don't live that long. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to bring up a little replacement rooster up here with an yeah. oxygen tank. <laughs> <clears throat> so we were at this car show, and that year, I was nominated for a few uh, Houston Press Awards. Um, basically, I think I had ruffled some feathers because we were independent. Um, we were playing things by our own rules. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have, like, really, like, no bosses. Like, I literally... It might be might have been a mistake at the time but like i literally burned bridges with like program directors at radio stations because mm -hmm. i remember one time one of them called me like hey man you know i heard you do an interview for the other station bro like just want to let you know that's not cool and i'm like oh. hold, on. hold on wait 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 come again you know i heard y'all know the station do an interview okay so so i'm independent you know that right and I'm, i need to get known i'm trying to get heard and last time I checked, y'all not really playing nothing of mine. And these people offered to interview me. So it doesn't make any sense. And I think I raised my voice. And they, they held a grudge uh -huh. to this day. Yeah. But I was young. And you're not going to call me. You're not my boss. You're not my employer. You don't play me. So anyway, we ruffled some feathers. We're at this car show. And some of the artists, I think, you know, didn't like how we were just... Coming up, I Move, guess. Yeah, coming up in the game. And I guess some people said they were going to jump me, and some people heard, overheard it. And we'll see about that. Yeah. Well, somebody overheard or something. So they're like, hey, man, you know, high alert. Yeah. We overheard from such and such label over at such and such booth. That they're going to jump you after the show. Something like that. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, y'all don't know about my big sisters. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, come on, Chingo, you got backup from your big sister. But we were just minding our business. We were on alert. You know, we were just trying to see friend or foe mm -hmm. who's going to try something stupid. And, uh, you know, we had Cleto, so we were, we were ready. So anyway, we had to head over to the Houston Press Awards. We're packing up, which was a pain. Those car shows, man, you end up so tired from just walking up, walking on concrete, mm -hmm. like bending over, grabbing stuff, handing it to the customers, taking a lot of pictures, autographing. So now we're finally loaded up. We're still on alert. Y'all want y'all remember? Uh, y'all want to tell? So I'm not. Mm -hmm. the one well, we were packing up, like you said. We're walking out. Uh, we made sure that you got to the van and ready to go to the uh, press awards, like you said. 
And then we saw a group of them like having, having a little, little meeting. meeting. <laughs> and then what did Pat do? <laughs> I went over there. She, she interrupted went, the meeting. She interrupted the meeting. This is your, we're talking about your mom, Brianna. Do you hear? <laughs> have you heard this story? No. Yeah. So yeah, I was just playing dumb and when it yeah, got up in a circle, little ear. who we jump? Uh, yeah, no, she was. A circle. She was. Who we jumping? <laughs> who jumping? Who? <laughs> who jumping? Who? What? Where? Why? But in a nice way. <laughs> oh, excuse me, y'all trying to jump somebody? Who we jumping? <laughs> and then, and then I went about just so y'all don't get the story twisted. I went to the how do you say it? to the horse's mouth. Mm -hmm. To the person. Um, I went up to the main person who we believe was stirring up stuff, and I went straight up to him. Got within very close distance, proximity, just to let him know, like I'm not, you know, I'm not afraid. Of you. Hey, brother, uh, I understand there's a misunderstanding. I understand there's something you got on your chest, and I'm just letting you know we don't really have time to discuss it right now. Mm -hmm. But I am headed to the Houston Press Awards. Just letting you know, we not scared. I'm just letting you know my whereabouts. Just so you don't think I'm running and hiding, I'm letting you know where I'm headed to. So if you're serious, yeah. hopefully you don't show up. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just letting you know I'm not hauling ass out of here because of you. I'm late for something, and I'm gonna let you know where I'm going. Yeah, yeah because I mean we were we were all about you know Respect. business. No, we were all about business, trying to sell merchandise. Yeah, and just that, like I'm all about comedy, yeah. but at the same time, unfortunately in this game, it's kind of hard to. Now I don't give a shit. No. Now I'm, I'm doing stand up. I'm to, I'm doing something the else. The audience but, is different. Yeah, yeah. Every, everyone's grown up. Uh, we've all evolved. All everyone's grown up. But but at the time, it's like, uh, you know, they think, oh, because you're a funny guy, we could just pick on you. And then at the same time, it's like, well, he does rap. Shouldn't you be tough? Or shouldn't you be gangster? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, so it's like, yeah, I'm a rapper, but I'm not. I'm a comedian, but I'm not. So it's kind of like always in the middle. Uh, but but homeboy, um, after that, it was all cleared up. Oh man, you know, yeah, you know how it yeah, is. Yeah, we never we never had any problems <clears throat> after that. Yeah, I, I bumped into yeah. him several several times after that. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like, whatever, what is it? Water under the bridge. Mm -hmm. But uh, how how we doing on time? Uh, Bree, can you look at that little recorder on, on the uh, right here next to the headphones and just see what number? This? Yes. What number does it say? Don't touch it. 59. Who? 59, 59? minutes. Okay. One last story, because I, I know we, we all got stuff to do. Uh, what's another good childhood youth? We talked about Halloween. We talked about y'all playing security at the car show. Mm -hmm. You stood in my wedding. You stood, stood in Pat's wedding. I was the wedding. ring. Was I the ring boy? At mine and at Pat's. The same? Mm -hmm. He was a little old. You were a little older, but yeah, you were there. I remember one story where we were at a video shoot and we had to feed all the whole production. Oh my god, that's a um, funny one. Yeah. Which video it was, was it? Walk like Leto. Pick up. Walk like we Leto. had chicken that barbecue. Had been, barbecue chicken. We smoked. had it. So y'all ordered it like a, oh, yeah. was it brown, brown sugar? sugar yeah. Like yeah. It was it was a nice chest. Probably I don't know <laughs> half the size. It was one of those big white ones. And Dad was in charge. Uh, oh, and all he did. He had All one job. He had to do was one job. Come in and we were getting ready to serve. Like he didn't have to people. cook. He didn't have to yeah, smoke no meat. It was like a big it's production. Up. So, so I sent Dad over to get the barbecue. Come back. Everything was set up, and then we had lunchtime call. You know, the call sheet oh, coming up. The lunch and okay, Dad, we'll be here in a minute. Oh my God. We were waiting for him. We were to waiting to for him to, to drive up. So <laughs> then we had our cousin uh, Jose. To meet that, um, to help. I said, hey, well, help my dad, help him bring the ice chest up here with the chicken. And then he said, hey, he calls me, he says, hey, there's no ice chest in the back of your dad's truck. Uh -huh. And then I said, dad, there's no ice chest. Well, where's the ice chest? Ice bag, the minute bag, it's in the bag, it's white, blah, blah, blah. And it was like, no, it wasn't there. Dad dropped it on 45 oh, somewhere. I think off a telephone. He didn't close the, the hitch right? right. The, 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 back, the tailgate. back of the tailgate. So that they were flying. The thing flew. <laughs> there was barbecue chicken all over 45 South. So then, my, of course. <laughs> Quick thinking. So, yeah, so my, you know, dad was upset. You know, he, he was, was upset. upset. He, he was, was like, upset. Upset. I, I, you <laughs> So then, of course, you know. It's because I had a lot on my mind. I had to drive. Yeah. So. I had to drive. I had to, I just had to drive. Yeah, so of course, you know, I was in charge of. Well, yeah, yeah, you yeah, can yeah, tell yeah. them what I would do back then, but. 
Uh, it, I was like, okay, don't worry. I said that we still got, what, 45 minutes before we have to start feeding people. Up, think, you know, we had the gaffers, we had the church and the groups, everybody. This is a long time ago. Yeah, this is a long time ago, like maybe, what, before 15, YouTube, 16, 17 years ago. Where well, you had to, like, shoot on film or something. It was on uh, um, 8 million. That one, that one might have been 16 million. 16. And um, so then we started calling uh, chicken places, Popeye's. Well, we could only do so many. We needed like 150 pieces Georgia. of chicken. So, so we then we split up. up. We sent, I don't know, like four or five people to different um, chicken places. We had Kentucky Fried Chicken. We, we had, had all churches. Kind of we had Popeyes. So I said, bring as many as you can. So I gave everybody, you know, money. We always, you know, make sure we have money on cash for emergencies. So, uh, yeah, they came back and no one knew. No one knew. No one knew we were supposed to have barbecue chicken. And this was the walk like little video? This was the walk like little video. With Wavy. Rest in peace. Yeah. My, um... Uh, we were driving to San Antonio. Yeah. All of us drove out there. He was with us. Was to San Antonio? Well, Weeby was on the road with us a lot. I mean... He lived with you. Yeah, we were like... my parents and... We were, were like two peas in a pod all the time. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. in the studio, or yeah, mom anything. would be cooking. Who's like, What you cooking, mom? Hey, mom, yeah. Yeah. hey, mama, what you cooking? When we got the news, you know, my mom, <laughs> yeah, my, my mom, mom was really upset. My mom called me too. She was like, Santa, what you have a child, or mm -hmm. she's just like, You know, my mom, what you cooking, mom? Mm -hmm. We were remembering, and, and my yeah, dad too, dad. yeah, because um, when Katrina happened, uh, when Katrina happened, we, we uh, I think I was out of town, I was like yeah. in California. And I guess, I don't know if my dad picked him up at the airport or something. We was at the house and and, my, and he was upset because he couldn't reach none of his siblings, his mom, his mm -hmm. family. He couldn't reach anybody. All the cell towers were jacked up. Yeah. Katrina was a mess. Okay. So you're seeing all these images. You can't get a hold of your family. You're hoping they escaped. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was like a, a nervous wreck, my dad was telling me. And then my dad told him like, hey dude, relax, get something to eat. Like you can stay here, chill. And then shortly thereafter, the phones, they, he got news of like, hey, we're good, we got out, we're here, we're there. And um, and then I think I landed the next day. But uh, yeah, rest in peace to Weeby, man. One day you're here, the next day you're gone. Flatline is another mm -hmm. one that we We've lost, lost. Uh, some people. And Rocky they were all, uh, I mean. Tiny. Yeah, yeah. My, uh, my buddy Tiny from Cancer. Mm -hmm. And we had we had a breakfast with him in, um, in Corpus Christi at a Cracker Barrel, like, Maybe a couple months before, mm -hmm. and I'm 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 horrible about funerals. I don't I don't like funerals. Um, I know they had Tiny's down in the Rio Grande Valley in a small town where his family's from. Weavy, they did a nice thing with the second line and everything in New Orleans. And I was uh, getting on this. I couldn't get information from anybody. Like, can somebody give me like what are, yes, what's going on? Arrangement services mm -hmm. and uh, like. You know, it happened in New Orleans, and like super last minute, they're like, oh yeah, 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. today. All of them were always so respectful, because for me, it was like, on you, you know, I've never been around any of that. I was a housewife, mm -hmm. you know, uh, with three little kids at home. They're all grown up. My oldest is 31, but uh, but all of them, all of them were very respectful. Uh, Faith Dogs, yeah, I think, I think yeah. yeah, I think people really respected how it was just a family unit. It was independent, it was very homegrown. And then, you know, we built it up to the point to where all these record labels started calling. Oh, and I'm having to call Mr. Charlie Braxton in Mississippi to figure out what the hell, what the hell does all this shit mean? You know, very Diddy, good Diddy's, yeah, consulting and everything. Diddy's promising this, Master P talked about this, you got Capitol Records, you got this, that, and that. Mm -hmm. And it was overwhelming. You know, considering we had already got screwed, which is a very, oh, it was a very important lesson. I had a lot of problems that one time. I mean, like going through a lot of like depression. Oh, well, it's a, it was bad. we probably wanted to choke somebody. Oh, I wanted to choke somebody. Yeah, yeah. because we totally got robbed. Yeah. Um, and, and we have a lawsuit that we won. I don't and, know if I... Know and I heard that we, we still have a lien on the property. Well, no? the... They were crooks to begin with, so they, so they knew exactly what they were doing. So, because I heard when, that property's for sale. 
Oh, and I might just go up in there and see what I could talk to Dan. Yeah, see what I could buy. I don't know where Dan's memory, but he's just like. Oh, I know exactly where it's at. Okay, well he said there's a for sale. Yeah, I know exactly where it's at. He said there's a for sale. But um, yeah, they were to where nothing was in their name. So they knew how to rob. Yeah, so then when I went out and did uh, after we won the lawsuit, I mean we have a lawsuit out there. It's public record uh, for almost two hundred thousand dollars. And it's been so long since yeah, the interest. I think I think back sometimes, and I try not to. Um, Brianna, you're young, so you might want to hear this part. Mm -hmm. I try not to like do the what ifs and yeah. the, what if I'd have done this, and and it's like, what if we had never fell for that trick, mm -hmm. or what if what if they did rob us? You know, what if we did collect all that money? Well, maybe that would have been a bad thing. Or maybe it could have been a good we thing. We learned. Yeah, we learned yeah. from it. So then when everything else came we had, around, we, we literally knew exactly had to, what to ask. And we had to regroup. Because it's like, okay, we got robbed. Uh, yeah. Your first album, which you built up the demand. Y'all put y'all put in so many hours of yeah. time and work to get money. this. Money. Money. Not only that, resources. because they wanted to do the manufacturing and distribution. But even then, you were smart enough to say, no, 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 we'll handle the, you well, you would, you would think smart enough, right? Well, yeah. well hand, not handing them over the rights to all Yeah, no, no, no. It was strictly the, distribution. Yeah, strictly, so. You know, they... Anyway. Could they ask for more merchandise? Oh, I could tell you another That's funny story, story on that when one. When Dad handed it over. Um, so then, of course, you know, we went and we thought we were going to collect this. They were in major, I mean, their album was in the major stores, so, you know. And it was thought, SoundScan. Yeah, SoundScan. And we saw how many, so we how did the math. Because so. our percentage was supposed to be, what, 70? Uh, it was a good percentage. I think it was... Uh, no, 80-20 or it was something? It's like 80%. 80, 20. All they had to do, they really, I was going to allow them to make free money. All mm -hmm. they had to do was stick to the script mm -hmm. and they would have got their 20%. Yeah. Yeah, I was but out they out wanted 100. Yeah, we were delivering. Oh, and they kept the 100. But we were at the delivery and then, so when we went and we picked up our first little check, I was like, hey, this don't look right. So then were were course, you there? Yes, I was there. Because it was me, David. Yes, I was there. It was in a, a table like this in that uh, warehouse in that building that we were in. And uh, so, yeah, I'm disappointed. We came out, you know. But, oh, we didn't. Screw yeah. Them. So, uh, of course, when I went, um, oh, and then after that, a couple of days later, they wanted more units. You know, and when we would deliver the units, they would, my dad would back up the truck, uh, and then they would come with a forklift and, and unload the units because they were like thousands. Because of they units. had to go to like Fye and all these stores that yes. don't exist. Yes. So then, uh, of course, when we didn't get our first, uh, uh, well, you didn't get well, your first expect. check from um, from you know the sales of the the units we had delivered. So they were calling us to for more. So then uh, we had an attorney read all this. Everything was fine, but they just didn't yep. stick to the script like you said. On paper, on paper it was fine. So then I read it. I didn't consult with the attorney because it was, you know, it's expensive. So then I read there. It didn't say how many units, you know, we were obligated to deliver. And they're asking me for more. So then I think I did make one call. At that time, Andrew was already helping us. This was before Andrew. But was it? Oh, I don't remember. Um, but anyway, I saw that it, we weren't, you know, it didn't specify how many units we had to deliver. So they were calling me, but I had to make sure that I wasn't in breach of contract. Yeah, because they need a clean version. Right? Yeah, I, I had to make sure that I wasn't in breach of contract, and if I didn't deliver, then I would be in breach of contract. So then um, I said, okay, yeah, sure, I'll send my dad down there. Handed over one copy. They handed pulled, over one copy. They pulled the truck back. Yeah. Forklift. He did the whole theatrics. Yeah, he did the whole thing. Get your forklift. He pulled the truck back. Suck on the forklift. The guy, <laughs> chingo. The guy came with the forklift thinking he was going to get, you know, all these units. Dad gets off with just one. Here you go. Here you go. Just one. And we, were, we weren't out of And then he know. was like, it's on now. Yeah. And then he threw it on the ground. Yeah. So and, then then I, and then he burned rubber <laughs> when he left. Then he came back. I was waiting for him. What and he told he me that. Yeah, he was. He said he was Probably. a little scared, but at the end it was all it was funny. So after that, we didn't have anything to do with it. But it's okay, you know. We learned. You learned. You bounce back. And yeah. I just remember thinking like, okay, well, that didn't go well. What do I do now? And it's like you got a bad taste in your mouth. But it's like, well, fuck. I guess I'm, and then that's when you're just like, all right, well, fuck. Let me get back in the studio. Mm -hmm. Let's make some remixes. Let's do some mixtapes. Let's yeah. get back to our roots. Yeah. Let's build up the demand yeah. again. Build up the demand and the the, the funds. Everything. Continue, everything. Like, keep it yeah. going. Really just try to like 
bounce back from a loss. Yes. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, uh, enough negativity right there. But um, this could be part one. We'll probably have to do part two. Yeah, there's a lot. 15 years of, you know. I'm going to have uh, to save this audio. I think we're in the first two. five. I, I'm going to have to save these stories, save this audio so I can review for my uh, one-man show or uh, autobiography or something. I don't know. <laughs> great stories, great catching up with my sisters. Anything you want to say to the people? What are you saying about um, No, I'm just, you know, happy that, you know, you have longevity, mm. longevity because, uh, you know, from day one, you know, the little kid at the radio station mm. and then, you know, here you are now, uh, some shows out and touring all over the country. So yeah, I'm proud. Um, of course, you know, we've never had doubts. We never had our doubts in you. So uh, we were just there to help you and support you when we have your back. And, and, still and bless your back. heart because if I was 35 and one of my little siblings or nephews or somebody was like, hey man, I'm 20 and I want to go to California and do this and that because I got an, an appearance, I'd be like, Oh, she, would tra she would travel and yeah. travel. I'd, I'd be would, like, man, good travel. luck. Yeah, I would travel. I was either, uh, come on, Lucky, come on, let's go. It was fun. We had yeah. a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, we had a lot of fun, but I was there probably like your, um, like a tour manager sort of type. No, well, not really, because David did all that. But, uh, yeah, I was, I was just there yeah. supporting. Different roles at different times, mm -hmm. whether it was the... Um, production coordinator on the music video yeah. <laughs> the chicken coordinator yeah <laughs> but um i guess tell me y'all's instagram at least uh the boss force lipstick we have merchandise t-shirts mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and on instagram the boss Wars lipstick uh -huh. where you you cover a lot of your real estate yeah I, I just started it's really not like i mean i well let me know on your next project because yeah. i want to go be an intern and uh and learn well the next one i think it'll be with my son eric he's Starting, but yeah, you can see you know what I've done and you know what how the houses start off and how they finish off. Uh, I don't have a you have an Instagram? business Instagram. What, what is it? Just my name, Pat yeah. Gonzo. Pat, I don't even know. Pat Gonzo. There's a number. I just click on it. And Twenty-two. It's, <laughs> you have a at Pat Gonzo twenty-two. But we also have um, a Stargazer mm -hmm. on Instagram. And that's shop at, uh, at shop, shop Stargazer. Uh, at Shop Stargazer. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, I'm my nephew too, uh, Pat's son, Andrew, at Texas Mexi Q. Q. And if you're in Houston, stop by one of his pop ups. And actually, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's like 99% confirmed that he's going to be slanging barbecue at uh, Chingo de Mayo, May 3rd. Oh, really? May 3rd, Sunday. Okay. I hit him up. He says he has another mm -hmm. event. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he thinks he can probably like do both. Yeah, it's a okay. 100th birthday party. What? Do. Oh, oh yes, yeah. Chris Cardenas is a grandmother is turning 100 years old, oh. so he'll be catering that event for them. Oh. Yeah. So happy birthday. Happy see what time. see what times. Time. 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 Yeah, but we'll be. Oh, I mean, we'll be there to help them. Yeah, so. Okay, we'll figure it out. Well, okay. thank you so much to my sisters for being a part of this exclusive podcast. And uh, we will see you guys on the road. More info at And stay tuned for part two. Gracias. Thank Peace. You. Thank you.